So today I have a super interesting experiment and paper for you today. The paper is called Natural Language Reinforcement Learning, and it was printed on November 21st by a few different universities, uh, University College of London, Shanghai, Brown University, National University of Singapore, University of Bristol, and the University of Surrey. Um, <clears throat> breaking down this paper very fundamentally, it's a lot of mathematics um, and kind of the bottom line, it's really what the paper says, right? It's reinforcement learning for uh, LLM models. And if you're not aware of uh, this problem and this situation in depth, you might not know that um, reinforcement learning for LLM models is somewhat of a challenge. When it comes to reinforcement learning, the algorithms that we utilize for reinforcement learning are fundamentally different than uh, the algorithms that we utilize to train LLM models. We use what's called PPO algorithms typically for uh, reinforcement learning, which is uh, proximal policy optimization, as opposed to uh, more linear algorithms for um, LLM models. So LLM models are trained linearly, which is why you can measure loss rate, et cetera, right? Uh, they're trained generally on a linear optimization algorithm, whereas with these PPO algorithms, they're trained on a discrete algorithm. Um, so it's it's like two different environments. And then so trying to put the LLM model into the discrete environment tends to have bad consequences because <laughs> it's its first time seeing it uh, is generally how this breaks down. And so this paper, they do a good job of bridging that gap, right? They do a lot of math. And, and so there's been a lot of focus recently on this gap. Well, this gap that I just described, this problem that I described, it's, it's a known problem. Right? And it's, and it's a, a known problem by a lot of people. And a lot of people want to solve this problem. Like a lot of people want to um, reinforcement learning, use reinforcement learning for LLM models. And so the challenge has been bridging that gap. If you watch uh, one of my videos I made like a week or two ago, I uh, make a, a utilizing kind of similar framework here to uh, teach an LLM model chess via reinforcement learning. So you can see myself, lots of researchers are all in on these types of concepts and understanding kind of the math involved and what we need to do to uh, get past these hurdles. And so within this research paper, they introduce a few novel concepts that I hadn't played around with before. And to me, again, I, I did the chess thing. I did the environment thing already. Um, but I'm interested in, um, so they propose a model within here uh, for a text-based environment. And so models are, LM models are inherently text-based, right? To me, um, their universe, like their construction of reality <laughs> is text, literally text. Uh, and that's how they they... they see and, and construct everything. And then so to me, the challenge is, is getting them to uh, learn within that environment, right? So then if you create an environment and their whole entire universe is text, what does that environment look like? And then so uh, this algorithm here uh, is uh, a text-based environment. <laughs> it's is, uh, kind of what it's meant to construct, right? Um, so you, uh, I essentially, I have the data set, and in, in this instance, I'm training it on uh, my PFAP data set, uh, just because I need to pick a data set, and then so why not? So, <laughs> so I pick my PFAP data set, uh, and then it's uh, a lot of this is just constructing the, the environment and the fine-tuning um, mechanism itself. Uh, and then I put this adaptive boundary in here, which is essentially just making sure that the the I'm teaching the boundary, the model at the same time, a um, textual construct, but then I'm also trying to teach it um, spatial awareness, right? Um, so here's a boundary that you can operate within, and then like um, you'll be plotting things inside and outside of that boundary, and then I want the model to understand that concept, right? Inside of the boundary and outside of the boundary, and just by simply interacting with the boundary, I see what that does, <laughs> and, and that's literally it. That's all I program into that, right? I don't program any other logic into it. Just here's the boundary, um, and then uh, you're going to be interacting with this boundary <laughs> as you go through. Uh, and then so we go through, and I've been having this model go through now for about uh, over about two hours. <laughs> you, you can see, uh, which is. Typical, like if you are unfamiliar with uh, reinforcement learning and, and PPO algorithms, uh, they take a long time. Like uh, a typical reinforcement learning process, uh, like teaching a, a model to play an Atari game, 
like a full training process could be like six to 12 hours. So um, these responses are a million percent expected to me, but it's interesting seeing the uh, change in responses as the model tunes. Like I can see that the model is tuning and there are, there are um, things occurring within this, right? And I've been measuring the lo this loss rate the whole time. The loss rate does go down. The loss rate hasn't gone down yet uh, within this two hours below four. It started at 12. Uh, which is a very high loss rate um, and then it's gone down and then it went down to about four and then it jumps back up like the model is still trying to figure out like in my opinion in my mind what's going on like what exactly am i what exactly is my purpose within this uh data set in this training like what is this dude like trying to get me to do i've never done any of this before like i've never uh, gone through this reinforcement learning i've never seen this data set. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> like, so I think it's still really confused, even after two hours. Uh, I think after another two hours, I'm going to be less confused. And then maybe like six to 12 hours total. I'm going to try to let this run. I'm running this in, Co in Google Colab uh, via CPU, so I can let it run a lot. <laughs> we'll see what it does, right? Uh, and that's my purpose. Is to, My goal with this is to just let this run. Uh, and then we'll see if there's major significant improvements from this and I'll provide updates there. Um, if you run this through, like if you're one of the people like I'm going to run this, this guy's code through the LM model and then see what the LM model says about like uh, what this guy's saying. LM model is going to like uh, point to the um, self-supervised learning aspects within this. And then so it's going to like the initial trigger for an LM model is going to be like, hey, this is a uh, supervised learning algorithm. Um, but Again, like it's a habit point to the fact and look at those self supervised elements within that. Essentially, what is happening is like the model is um, simulating um, supervised learning. <laughs> it's utilizing Monte Carlo algorithms to simulate supervised learning for itself. So, um, it, yes, it's it's supervised learning itself, but it's the whole supervised learning that is going on and, and that is occurring here is a simulation. It's like inside the model's head, basically, right? And then so, uh, yes, the actual method is supervised learning, but it's like virtualized supervised learning that is only occurring within this neural network's brain. If that breaks down, it makes sense. Uh, so it's a pretty cool algorithm to me overall, right? What it's doing. Uh, again, I'll let it run and I'll leave a link to this description. You can play around with this. Uh, and then again, if there's any major updates, I'll release a, like a second a follow up video that goes into like, uh, here's the cool performance that this model did after I trained it on this for 12 hours, 20 hours or so. We'll see. If you have the content, please like and subscribe. Thank you very much.